Oh, that was taken. Then another one is this. Gas can change to liquid. That's what we call co condensation. So, for example, when like goes close to a boiling water, then put your hand on the vapor. Then remove your hand. Then check. Before you know, the vapor will begin to condense and change to liquid. So that's condensation. So these are the major ones. So our point of focus here is boiling and melting. So water boils, then changes to gas. So at that stage, the uh, liquid and gaseous state exist together, they coexist. So boiling point is the temperature at which water changes from liquid to gases. So on, on, in another word, boiling point is the temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. The melting point of a substance is that temperature at which it begins to change from solid to liquid. So in that case, we see the substance or the solid is melting. Melting and boiling points are tests for purity. So for us to know whether a substance is pure or not, so we test them. So which is boiling and melting point. A pure substance will have a definite boiling point and a sharp melting point. Exception, we have azeotropic mixture. So these ones, they have constant boiling point. So you can't use such tests to know whether they are pure or not. But whatever that test of purity, pure substances form only one spot in paper chromatography. So they have definite refractive index. So those are other properties of pure substances and test for purity. <clears throat> Physical and chemical changes. Of course, substances change, they undergo changes. But these changes, do they lead to the creation of new substances? Are new substances formed in the process? Can they be reversed? Is heat involved? So this what brings us to chemical and physical changes. A physical change is a change in which no new substance is formed. Just like something changes physically, like size of this, uh, of size of a marker, size of the board can change. Or bring a sheet of paper, tear it. So it has changed in size, right? But that is all. Nothing else has happened. You can, you can go meet back. Or you pour water and salt. That is physical changes. So no reaction involved. So it's, it can be reversed and no new substance is formed. On the other hand, chemical properties, or ke sorry, chemical changes are changes in which new substances are formed. For example, see a sheet of paper, burn it, something else is formed and you can't reverse it. So that's chemical changes, reaction just took place. And most chemical changes involve heating, okay? So that is it, so chemical changes, new substances are formed, physical changes, no new substances are formed. All right, now separation technique. Before we go straight into the separation process, so let me take you over what we've done so far. All right, so far, we've been able to establish that a substance is any form of matter that has definite composition and distinct properties. So we are also able to distinguish between pure and impure substances. So, and I also told you that an impure substance is also called mixture. So a mixture is simply a substance that contains two or more elements physically combined. So that was how, uh, where we explained the meaning of element and difference between an element and compound. So I told you that element is a substance which cannot be split into simpler form by an ordinary chemical process. So I was also able to explain compound as a substance that contains two or more elements chemically combined. The difference between compound and mixture is that a compound contains two or more elements 
chemically combined. So for there to be a compound, there will be chemical reaction. So compounds are formed as a result of chemical reaction between elements. Why mixtures are physically combined? So there is no reaction. So I'll give you an example of mixture, which is air, bronze, brass, and so on. One example of compound are sodium chloride, ammonium chloride, hydrogen uh, tetrasulfate cis, and so on. And I also distinguish between physical and chemical changes. Physical changes are uh, changes in which no new substances are formed. Substances change, okay, and they undergo changes. But when these changes result to the creation or to the birth of newer substances and cannot be reversed, it is termed as chemical change. For example, when you tear a sheet of paper, it's still a paper, right? So it has not changed. Irrespective of the fact that the, the size has reduced, physical size has reduced, but it's still a paper. So that is only physical change that happened. So if you have to replace this blood, uh, board, it's a physical change, but it, it reduced inside. So it's physical change. There's no difference, nothing has changed, nothing new. Now think about it. What about I, I burned a sheet of paper? It has changed, right? So I can't bring it back to become the, uh, the form it was before it was burned. So that is what chemical changes is about. So there are changes that involve the creation, of, that result to creation of new, newer substances, and they cannot be reversed. And for a chemical change to occur, there is usually the heating. Chemical change usually involve heat, while physical change may not involve heat. That's the difference. And also, let's let's take a salt. If you pour water on salt, uh, on salt, there will be physical change. But after separation technique, I will be able to recover my salt. Okay, so that is physical change. No new substance is formed, and I was able to reverse it. Now, we, do, we talked about melting and boiling point. The melting point of a substance is the temperature at which the substance changes from solid state to liquid state. So and at the melting point of a substance, the solid and liquid exist in phase. So they are in phase. Why for boiling point is it simply the temperature at which water changes from liquid state to vapor. So your water begins to vaporize. So the standard definition of boiling point is the temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. So I've already explained these terms. And in today's lecture, we shall be going straight into separation processes. Now, what is separation and what can be separated? Separation is simply the process of bringing out mixtures into their components so to also filter the components that make up a mixture. So when stuffs are mixed together, so you have to separate them. For example, when the, the water and salt is being mixed, so for me to get my water back and my salt back, so I need to separate. So that is separation. So and simple separation techniques are used to separate mixtures because they are combined by an ordinary or physical means. Whereas it is very difficult to separate compounds. Okay. Now, look at the techniques you are supposed to know as long as jam is concerned. Supposed to know evaporation, simple distillation, and fractional distillation, sublimation, filtration, chromatography, crystallization, and fractional crystallization. So I'll quickly go through them. Then in subsequent lectures, we both will go deep into each of the terms. So this is the first topic and introduction. All right, evaporation. You've heard it saying that it will evaporate. Now, so the thing evaporates for months, okay? Or when you study for an exam and you forget uh, what you studied. So, uh, sometimes when you're discussing with your friend, you'll be like, I've done that thing before. When I say it, it don't evaporate. 
So it means it has escaped. So that knowledge can be brought into evaporation here. Now, what principle is evaporation based on? In simple term, evaporation is based on a difference in volatility of solid and solvent. Okay? It's used to separate uh, a, a solid that is more volatile. For example, in salt making from seawater, the salt is combined with water. However, water is more volatile. That's to say, it's, it's, it decomposes on heating. Get it? So it escapes, it evaporates. So in that case, once you heat, the water evaporates, leaving behind salt. So to get your water back, you can then condense the water that evaporated, or the, the, the vapor. So that is evaporation. Then simple distillation. Distillation can be simple or fractional. Both simple and fractional distillation are based on differences in boiling point, which I've already explained. So now we are separating two mixture with far boiling point. We use simple distillation. For example, try to separate alcohol and water. Alcohol has a lower boiling point than water. So in the process of separation, the alcohol evaporates. It leaves, okay? Leaving behind the water. Then to get your alcohol back, you need to condense the vapor. So it now forms alcohol. So that is simple distillation. The fractional distillation also is also based on the principle of differences in boiling points. But the difference between simple distillation and fractional distillation is that fractional distillation is used to separate liquid or uh, substances with close boiling point. So you can use fractional distillation to separate two more than two mixtures, whereas simple distillation is used to separate only two mixtures. The example is crude oil in refineries. So there are different mixtures with close boiling point. So the only way or the best way to separate them is to use fractional distillation. So as you heat with different column, so at every temperature, each of the substance leaves. So it evaporate, they evaporate, then distills, evaporate, then distills. So you're able to separate oil and other components of crude oil. Now sublimation. Sublimation is the process whereby the solid turns to gas directly without passing through the liquid state. So example of substances that sublimate are like your comfort. When you put comfort in your clothes, after some days, it's not like it has vanished and your clothes don't get wet, okay? So that is sublimation, it has sublime. An example of sublimation is a mixture of ammonium chloride and sodium chloride. To separate ammonium chloride and sodium chloride, you heat. So when you heat, the ammonium chloride sublime, okay? It goes directly into the gaseous state. This is from ammonia and chlorine. Why filtration? Well, you know, to filter. So the technique involving filtration is differences in size. For example, gari. You put the gari in a seal in a filter. So the smaller particles, they pass through the filter, while the bigger particles will remain. So you succeeded in separating. And also in purification of pipe bomb water. So you filter the water. Another separation technique is chromatography. So which this with difference in migration. Chromatography is used to separate the substance into its different forms to bring out the component, like di and amino acid separation. So you are trying to bring out the, 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 the different stuff that makes up the, the substance, like in the blood, plasma in the blood. So you bring it out. So you are trying to separate a particular substance to know what is made of, so that you go to analyze the substance fully. So another separation technique is crystallization and fractional crystallization. So they deal depend on the difference in solubility, drop and sugar production. Okay? So that is basically what you should know. 
so long jump is concerned. So we are supposed to know the separation techniques and the principle they depend on so with example. A typical question. What separation technique is used in gene making industry to make alcohol? Now to make alcohol, this comes to your mind. So it's mixed alcohol and water. So the best separation method to use is simple distillation. Or for instance, you may be asked, what separation technique can be used to separate a mixture that sublime from that which does not sublime? Simple sublimation. Now, an, uh, a substance that contains two or more elements chemically combined is called dash. A. Element B. Compound C. Mixture D. Melting. So, from there, you've gotten the answer. So, the questions from this part are actually very simple. You should be able to attempt them. Okay?